Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It's eight early morning. Um, my thing is I couldn't get back to sleep and I ran some errands this morning. So, I had to take care of a little debacle that patient first apparently did and they don't realize they did it. Either that they just won't own up to their fuck ups, which is quite a long list turns out and I'm not afraid to say their name company name um <clears throat> but um I didn't share the video that I did yesterday because um I, I just want to move on from this crap really honestly really I'm just tired of it <clears throat> But, um, I'm kind of just chilling out right now in the parking lot. So, <clears throat> and I may or may not go live on Facebook. I don't know, because I've got plenty of time. I'm not hurting for it. Um, I am feeling a little better. <clears throat> um, but the thing is, when we'll find out how things go, I mean, I got... A different kind of medicine other than the prednisone. The alternative. <coughs> the alternative um, to prednisone. Um, because I got sick yesterday evening. I mean, it just, it just hit me. So... Anyways, um, I should be getting a lot better real quick. Er, goose. It's more than one, so it's geese. Um. <clears throat> so. Um, yeah. <clears throat> so, I want to quickly talk about holidays and what they're really supposed to be and how they are supposed to be celebrated. Because apparently, apparently, uh, there is no such thing as Thanksgiving. Um, it's completely ignored by retail and not even recognized. Hell! Some department stores are open on Thanksgiving Day. And they make it a blackout day so you don't call off. Now. <coughs> I believe we should let people volunteer to work holidays. And... If there's a certain amount of people that's able to, that's volunteered that <clears throat> are willing to run the store, um, or whatever you're doing, oh my gosh, uh, yeah, uh, let them, I mean, open the store, shoot, <clears throat> um, what really... What really aggravates me is, um, you got people that, they stress themselves out so bad getting Thanksgiving ready, um, and then as soon as Thanksgiving dinner is cleaned up and everything, they go right out and they, uh, camp, um, in front of department stores like, places like Best Buy, Walmart, Target, the malls, um, <clears throat> That's only to name a few that I know of. Heck, maybe there's a Bass Pro Shop where a bunch of rednecks are... I'm kidding. Maybe there's a... Well, you get what I mean. If there's a place where people want stuff, you'd be surprised how many people come out. And hold off. Um, or almost bring themselves to a tizzy just to get to a sale. I'm going to be dead honest. There's no item and object that is worth 
you sacrificing family time. There's no, there's no item in the world that will, <clears throat> that will, um, that will warrant you to sacrifice any time when it comes to not awkward at all, bruh. But hey, you do you do what you do. So, <clears throat> uh, the thing is, there's a quote that, you know, circulates around the internet and Facebook and Instagram and all those places that said, um, people are meant to be loved and things are meant to be used. What happened to society is somewhere something got in our heads and corrupted us to love things and use people things <clears throat> objects objects are they have no feeling sure in a energy level there's energy on it but it's not living it doesn't have feelings. If you were to, if I were to drop this water bottle and it breaks, I'm gonna be upset. Yeah, you bet. You bet I'm gonna be upset. But I'm not gonna mourn it. I'm not gonna <clears throat> sit there and cry about it. I'm gonna be really upset because I, I, I kind of like this water bottle. And if the stones in here break as well, it can be salvageable. I'm going to be upset, but it's an item. It's, it's stuff. It's an object. Stones do have a very significant e of energy, but I rather treat people the way I would want to be treated. <laughs> And, <clears throat> and just, you know, use my stuff. I don't want to love my stuff. I just, I just want to use my stuff and take care of my stuff. But as for people, I want to love them. I want to <clears throat> do for them. I want to make them feel good. I want to make them feel better. It speaks a lot on a person's character on how they treat other people, whether they know you or not. Um, <clears throat> in this society, we are a very sick society. We've got mothers abusing and using their children. We've got fathers that leave their family for selfish reasons <clears throat> and abuse their families and mothers that do the same thing too. We've got siblings that try to kill and murder each other and they're pretty cool with it. We've got kids and people that abuse and put animals through unnecessary pain and animosity. <clears throat> True story. I read in an article that this man uh, wanted to take revenge on his girlfriend. So, she, so he took the dog back that he gave her, you know, that she wanted. And he hauled off and locked it in a room and lived with it in that room uh, and let it starve to death. He just locked that room like it was dead to him, you know? The dog was crying, yelping, barking, and then all of a sudden, you know, it stopped. But by the time people finally got around to getting a permit, the dog was almost dead. It was starved to death. Its organs were shutting down. It was dying. Now, tell me if that wasn't diabolical. You don't do that to a living creature. 
Now, a lot of people even get bent out of shape over house plants. There are a multitude of ways to take care of plants and, you know, um, and, and reasons of it dying, you know. I mean, I had a nice potted plant with a bunch of mums on it and I watered it. I put it in the sunlight and I think it just got too cold in the house and they're dead. <laughs> I, I tried. Um, I tried. <clears throat> now, society as a whole, there's a lot of people waking up and they really don't know what to do with it. And people, I notice, are waking up <clears throat> and becoming self-aware. But the thing is, they don't know what to do with it, so they desensitize themselves with it. And that's not what we want. We want people to... <clears throat> I mean, they, they, they look at the society and people and everything surrounding it and existence as a whole and it's... It's heartbreaking because they realize what they've done. And they really, and, and they'll lay in bed and say, like, wow, I was a real total dick to this person. I'm afraid to show my face around there. Well, let's say you were a total ass to someone at a department store or a grocery store. <clears throat> and you happen to see them. <laughs> and... You feel compelled to do something. Well, you know, the right thing to do is to go up to them and say, act, you know, kind of act like you're interested if you have no reason to talk to them. Um, if people speed in a parking lot, what's it going to take for people to stop that? <clears throat> um, so, you go to that person. And you small talk a little bit. Yeah, they're going to be a little apprehensive. If they remember you. Um. So the thing is. You. You just say, hey look. I remember I was a jerk to you. And I'm sorry. It's not that hard to do. And if you're that prideful, you really need to reassess yourself before you go and try that again. Because some. <clears throat> some apologies may not be reciprocated the way you want them to be. They may, they them, themselves may have problems letting it go. <laughs> like um, a few weeks ago, it still lingers, but it's not that bothering me. It's not bothering me that awful much now. But a lady uh, got bent out of shape over a 16 cent transaction. Um, I asked her for her loyalty card and um, she said, no, it's only 16 cents. It doesn't matter. And I said, okay. So I went ahead and processed your order. And then she wants to tell me that I need to do a better fucking job. And, um, you know, it, it, it may have been just 16 cents, but she said, you should have put it in there anyways. And I said, I said, but you said, no, don't worry about it. You, you just, you act like you're in a hurry and I don't want to hold you up. I guess I should have been like, you need every single cent and point on your loyalty program. I'm not going to grab you by the face and be like, put in your number. That's not customer service. Okay. I'm not going to be like, give me your number. No, I'm, I'm not. If you don't want me to worry about your rewards, that's a-okay. I am not going to force anybody to do anything they don't want. And if, like, uh, another, oh, this brings up something, too. Like, <clears throat> for instance, I had, thank God, it's a past tense. Um, oh, no, they're still alive. <laughs> um, <clears throat> Um, I had a friend who was hanging around a person that was stalking me, like, profusely. 
Like they had to really figure out and do some investigation to figure out my whereabouts, my patterns, and where I went, what my my life schedule basically. So they found the closest thing they could, which was my friend at the time. And long story short, um, <clears throat> I got bad vibes off him, and usually my vibes usually are not wrong. Usually, it's like um, a per. Uh, let's do a percentage of accuracy. I would say 98 to 99% accuracy. Of course, some people say, oh, it's 100% accurate when you judge, you know, if you have a bad vibe on a person, you're usually right, Heather. I'm like, okay, sure. Thanks. That's what other people are saying. I'm saying 98, 99. I'm not saying it's perfect all the time. People are apt to change. And I'm hoping they do. <clears throat> Long story short, I begged and pleaded with her not to uh, go with this guy. Um, right, and, and, and that's also after he um, made a point to tell me that my relationship that I... Uh, my relationship with my now husband was only going to last her about four years. It has been well past that point. We're married now, and I ain't going nowhere, and he ain't going anywhere either. Um, <clears throat> yeah, we are in it for the long haul. We're not gonna hit it and quit it. We're gonna stick by each other, no matter what. Dead serious, no matter what. We've been through a lot. <laughs> um, so, let me tell you how I am, and you can judge me. I don't force anyone to do anything they do not want to do, nor do I force and make anyone do anything that I wouldn't do. So, I'm not... I mean, I will suggest very strongly and tell you the the possibility of the consequences of thy actions and leave it to you because I am not going to micromanage anyone's life. It is not my responsibility. It is completely and utterly up to yours. Up to you. Yours, whatever. It's morning time. Leave me alone. So I begged her, pleaded with her. I said, hey. I said, me and my, at the time, fiancé, um, my now husband, um, <clears throat> we will take him home and drop him off. You can stay here and sleep. You can stay here and sleep. It's late and you got work in the morning. So, you got your work clothes with you? Yeah. Okay. Um, long story short, she didn't listen. I mean... My husband back then even told her, you know, this is not a good idea. We're all getting bad vibes. My mother even told her. My brother, who keeps his nose out of everyone's business, even piped up and said something. My father, who does the same thing and didn't even want to be bothered with it, even said and warned. He said, you can sleep any, you can sleep anywhere you want. Do not leave with that guy. What happens? She left with the guy. My brother even rode with them to be dropped off at his house for a little while. And, yeah. As soon as he was dropped off, he said, you need to call her and you need to check up on her. Okay, I'm like, okay, yeah, sure. I called her like 20 minutes after they left. Oh, and actually 15 minutes, <clears throat> um, 15 minutes after he texted me and told me that and then I did it all the way to the wee hours of three in the morning asking are you okay did you get home safely are you all right I called um and I didn't have her husband's number so he te he texts me say and calls me he said hey can he said um she's not answering her phone can you wake her up I want to make sure she got off to work, and plus I need to know how much the cats get fed, and I'm just like, uh, 
she's not here, buddy. She left last night. And she won't answer her phone calls and text messages. So that worried him. Um, long story short, turns out uh, what happened, what you think happened, happened. In fact, later on she tells me she had certain things with her to make the passing a little more pleasant. Like a bottle of wine. A nighty too. She basically planned this out. And I felt pretty aggravated because I worried about her. And then she turned it around and said, It's my fault that it didn't stop her. And I'm like, what was I going to do? Knock you in the back of the head? Tie you up and throw you in a closet? I said, look, honey, if you wanted to do that, you should you should have at least you know been honest to your husband cause you're not using me for a lie huh especially on like that hang on so <clears throat> so, long story short, um, she turned it around as if it was my fault that didn't force her to stop and not go anywhere. And I'm like, you're blaming me for you cheating on your husband. I don't see how that works. We're not friends anymore, needless to say. It's been on how many years ago, but... Bottom line is I don't force anyone to do anything they really don't want to do. And that includes the friends that I've helped get clean. And if they relapse, I'm like, you better tell me. I'm not, I mean, I'm not, go I'm not going to make you feel bad and I'm not going to leave you. You just need extra support and help and you need to believe that you can do it. Judging someone for a drug problem or an addiction problem, it's not going to help. If they really... If they really want to quit... If they really want to quit, they're going to quit. I am proud. I am so overflowing with proudness. And joy that I have a friend that kicked heroin and other crap. I'm pretty sure there was other crap in the mix, but they quit it. I'm proud of them. They're clean and their girlfriend is too. And I am elated about that. I am thrilled. I am happy, overjoyed. And you know, I... I've done a lot of prayers and I've done a lot of manifestations for them and I've done a lot of, uh, you know, <clears throat> wellness uh, spells for them. And um, I think what really stood out was even when I met them when they were like really bad, like like really high, they got to the point where they were like... Um, they didn't understand why I was there and I was giving them, I was getting them Taco Bell. I was feeding them. I cleaned up where they were staying at a little bit. I wanted to make, I treated them like they were sick. Technically they are. They were. And they kept apologizing. I'm like, don't, 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 don't apologize. <clears throat> don't apologize. You're just, you're just a little sick. And they're like, no, we're high. I'm like, I know. But addiction is a sickness. You're a little sick. <laughs> you can do this right now. You just hit rock bottom. But you can only get up from here. You can't go any lower than this unless you just die. And let's hope you don't do that because kind of like having you around. And they laughed. <laughs> so, um... They, they didn't know what to do when I showed up with 
50 bucks of Taco Bell. I, I didn't. They needed to eat. Three days of no eating and just out of their skulls. If somebody really wants to quit something, or if somebody really wants to do something, you're not going to stop them. And that also includes things that are not good. Like, for instance, I know this is a horrible word, suicide. If somebody's going to kill themselves, they're not going to warn you. They're not going to tell you. They're just going to haul off and just do it. And you can't sit on people. <clears throat> it's just how it is. People are priceless. And we all should treat ourselves and each other like there's not another one of us. Because the truth is, you ready for this? There isn't another me. And there isn't another you. And there isn't another this person, that person, the other. Now, some people be like, well, in another dimension, are we in that dimension? No. Let's focus on the here and now. Nope. Let's focus on the here and now. There's only one me in this plane of existence. And there's only one you in this plane of existence. And you should at least treat yourself and other people like it matters. You know? So, I will leave you guys with that. I got some phone calls to do. Love and peace to you all. And I wish we all have a really good day today.